How's it going, everyone, and welcome to the Bot Podcast, where we interview movers, shakers, and innovators and talk all things conversational user interfaces. I'm your host, Chad Oda, and today we're very privileged to have Yoav Burrell. Yoav is the CEO and founder of Chatbot Summit. Chatbot Summit is the world's leading community and conference series with a mission to advance human technology interactions, leading with natural language. Chatbot Summit has brought together over 3,500 attendees from over 65 countries. Yoav has also previously held leadership positions at LivePerson, Oracle, and Sun, Sun Microsystems. Uh, at that, Yoav, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so before we roll into more you know, chatbot and voice-specific questions, um, I always like to ask a question based upon our guest background. And you've been part of three technology innovation cycles by this point, uh, mobile Java, apps, and now chatbots. Are there like any high level trends or common threads between innovation cycles that you now are sort of on the lookout for? And if so, do you have any advice for people currently in the bot space? Sure, it's a, it's a good question actually. Yeah, I think there's like a North Star that's driving uh, these innovations and um, I've been uh, lucky to uh, live through them uh, both as an entrepreneur, a tech entrepreneur, but also as a consumer. And what I notice is that we are, as humans, um, you know, we don't like to admit it, but we're lazy by nature. And the reason we're lazy is because we want to preserve energy um, for the stuff that's important to us. Um, and whatever makes it easier for us to interact with technology is eventually going to win. And the question is, is are the products good enough? Is the technology good enough to advance this interaction? And um, it takes around a decade of a, of a cycle between a technology that's actually good enough to where the market conditions enable it to move from the early adopters to the innovators and then to mass market. And I think that that's sort of what I see as a North Star is that what makes it easier for us to communicate. And I think that as a species, a species, sorry, um, you know, humankind is always looking to grow and what enables this growth is technology, a lot of it, and the interaction with technology when it's easier and it helps it scale better and grow faster and, and, and that's, I think, what's driving it. So natural language is, I feel, is, going, is starting to be the next thing. Um, I mean, apps were great um, and they've done their job. Uh, the experience we had with apps is far greater than what we had in the days of mobile Java. Um, and I'm seeing that now with voice um, and with text-based communication, that, that both are based on natural language, these are going to be uh, much better um, for us to communicate. So that's sort of what I'm seeing. Cool. <coughs> Cool. No, absolutely. Um, I remember also your keynote from the previous chatbot summit in Tel Aviv. You know, you were sort of pointing out, you know, when you look at the uh, hype cycle curve that we're sort of in this like trial of disillusionment right now, because there's been a lot of, you know, traction and a lot of hype and a lot of expectations from the previous two years from 2016 to 2017. And, you know, do you think we're still sort of in that phase at this point? Or are we sort of finally, you know, maybe tracking out of that down curve at this point? Yeah, so every revolution has a natural evolution. Let me maybe repeat that. Every revolution has a natural evolution. And that natural evolution is the way I see it and uh, also you know, according to the Gartner hype cycle is as follows. First of all, you have always bubbling technologies that are trying to burst and say, I am the technology that needs to win over the humor, uh, human technology interaction. But sometimes the technology is just not good enough. And sometimes the market conditions just say, you know, we just had a, you know, uh, an advancement two years ago, you need to wait because it takes time for consumers to adopt new paradigm shifts in technology, human technology interaction. So and I think it's around a decade that mm. that cycle happens. So these are technologies starting bubbling up and then you have the market conditions that make it ha happen also. Uh, so, if you look at the mobile space, um, if you take the biggest technology companies in the world, 
uh, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, um, and Google, uh, you'll notice that the two dominant players are, um, you know, from the app paradigm are Apple and Google, right? And then you have the challengers, the main challenge. Microsoft is a, is, a, is, is a player of its own, which I still haven't figured them out, to be honest. Uh, but they're doing amazing stuff. But um, let's talk about Facebook and Amazon. They don't have a grip in the mobile ecosystem the way they wanted to have the grip. Amazon failed um, launching a mobile device. Uh, Facebook, I don't know if they even really tried to do it, but what they're doing, they're turning things upside down by saying, okay, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, and um, I don't want to say Alexa because she'll wake up, but <laughs> are saying, you know, we are going to be the next operating system that is going to power these uh, interactions. So that's why you saw very aggressive play from Facebook, um, both on the acquisition of, you know, Instagram seemed aggressive then. Now this $1 billion acquisition looks cheap. Um, but $19 billion acquisition of WhatsApp, heavily investing in Messenger. I'm not surprised if they're going to launch their own voice assistant. I mean, they, they had this experiment with M, uh, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they launch a home speaker. Um, so they're basically saying we're going to be the new operating system in mobile, take the grip from Apple and uh, Google and, and mobile. Um, and I think that that's one play. And then Amazon are doing an amazing play with Alexa and basically coming in through the back door um, with this. So I think that that's one of the reasons we're seeing a lot of hype, or we saw a lot of hype with bots and um, um, you know, opening up Messenger to third-party developers. I think, I think they're taking too long with WhatsApp, but they're, WhatsApp is going to happen, and once that happens, it's going to explode. So the market conditions allows for these giant um, you know, players to say, we're going to change things. Because if, if these players don't want things to change, our technology is just not going to do it alone. So that with the combination of the advancements in natural language processing, in AI, um, in machine learning, I mean, and you can, you can put all the uh, different advancements in technology that basically allow us for natural language processing. These two combined with the fact that we have Four billion people using messaging apps. Then you have the, you know, the, the right time, and and then and then look at how much time has passed since the app ecosystem uh, evolved in 2008 to 2007, 2008. So it's around a decade. So now, how does this happen? Is it starts with the bubbling technologies, the fact that two players say we're going to make this happen, and then a lot of hype is being created. With this hype, you know, it's always overhyped because people are, are either greed, they have greed or fear. Um, and that, that's when greed starts kicking in and people say, okay, then chatbots are going to rule the world. Okay, voice is going to be amazing. We want these demos. And yes, and then you see VentureBeat every week and <laughs> like bots, bots, and then people come and you have these corporate executives getting excited about this uh, new technology that's going to change their daily lives. And they're saying, okay, so I want this thing that they said in the article, and then they meet reality and they understand that it's going to take three to five years to actually make these things real um, and commercially viable. So in the hype cycle, that's why the hype cycle happens. And then I think it's good because then it, um, you know, it, it takes away the players that don't truly believe um, that this is going to be the next shift. And, you know, just people that say, yeah, bots are cool, maybe we'll try it. And then they see it's not that easy. Um, or brands that see that it's not actually um, ready yet and they, and they give up. Um, and I think that's what the market's job is, to, is to clean up, clean out the white, the, the weak hands, sorry. And, and, and leave us with the winners um, that truly believe that this is going to be the next wave. Um, and, and, and that's why I believe we have these, uh, these hype cycles. And now what happens in, the, in, in this hype cycle, interesting, interestingly enough, is that all these companies and, 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 and professionals that truly believe in this and professionals from all sides of the spectrum, they're actually working and making this thing happen 
better. And that's what's happening today. So that's where we are in the cycle. There is less buzz, but there's more things that happen. And it's going to take another couple of years before um, people on the street that you'll see will use bots uh, in natural language interaction. No, absolutely. I think that was a really, really great, you know, high level analysis on, you know, the current state of chatbots and voice. Um, so I also want to go back to something else that seemed to be like the sentiment at the last chatbot summit in Tel Aviv. It seemed to me that there was this focus around building good experiences and focusing on the UX component before, you know, spending a lot of time making these developer tools. And I know that was sort of the swirling sentiment from a lot of speakers up there. Do you feel as though that you know, personality or the user experiences have significantly gotten better since January? Or do you think, you know, maybe sort of incremental improvements at this point and we still need to focus a lot of time on really creating really good user experiences from a chatbot or voice? I think it's incremental. Mm. Uh, it, it's something that we need to have the whole ecosystem work on it together. So from the, I would even say the capital from the venture capitalists that are providing funding to this, to the corporates um, that are corporate innovations and also, um, you know, head of digital and head of customer service, you know, to the startups and the uh, professionals and the UX designers and the developers. So I think it's uh, bottom up, top down. It, um, you know, we really need to work on this together to make it uh, better and it's not gonna happen in a day. Um, but when market adoption, happens it does happen in a curve so if you look at the hype cycle it starts with a big hype it goes down and then it comes and bounces up again um then you'll see people will see that this is actually happening so um yeah it takes it takes an ecosystem to make it happen and um that's what we at chatbot summit are about we want to help create a better healthier ecosystem that's going to advance um, these natural language experiences, um, you know, definitely. No, I think that was actually a really great segue to my next question too. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit more about, you know, the specific customer need and market opportunity that, you know, you really believe that chatbot summit is helping drive. You know, the way I see it, um, um, we have three things that I think we help in, um, learn, or let's say connect, learn, and grow. Um, so by connect, I think, um, you know, there's nothing like connecting in person. Um, whatever we do, we're, we're humans, first of all, we're not bots. So when we connect, we create better things together. You know, if, even if you meet a person for a coffee for five minutes and you have a discussion with him, um, the level of, 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 of intimacy or the level of connection is far greater than tens and thousands of interactions that happen uh, in the digital space. Um, and obviously video call is better than email, but it's still, you know, the subconscious mind gets so much information just by a handshake that we don't even grasp the, what really happens there. So I think connecting the people in person um, will create better, um, better ecosystems. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is learn. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion. And I think part of our job is to actually take the hype and say, listen, you're here at Chatbot Summit. This is the number one place of professionals that are building this, these things. And we're telling you that this is uh, not commercial viable demo. This is something that's going to take X amount of time, or this is something that's going to take an X amount of effort, of effort to make this demoware actually be software. So a lot of our job is to educate um, the corporates and the brands and also the, the, the people to sort of put everyone at the same level of saying, this is where we are. This is what can be done. Here are success stories. Here are people that have done it. By the way, here are some fuck ups. Things, <laughs> you know, it's fine. Uh, we share fuck ups. Actually, there's a fuck up night I was invited to. Um, I need to think of. I, I mean, I'm 43 years old. I had a lot of fuck ups. Fuck ups. Sorry, but in the past two years, I've had many. So I'm thinking of what to share. And and one of the things we're going to have at Chatbot Summit is 
not just success story, but also, you know, things we failed in. And by the way, if you failed, you might not want to do it yourself, just save time and headache and don't, don't make that mistake. So learning and learning goes back to also academy uh, style learning. So we have really the best and greatest mind in the industry. We've had hundreds of people, all top professionals really applying from the biggest brands in the world to the leading technologists in the world to the leading entrepreneurs in the world really all want to share their experiences and we're actually out of the day that's dedicated for learning only um, and connecting um, but really a strong focus on learning uh, workshops hands-on um, so learning is is a big thing and then uh, grow um, I think um, you know learning and connecting I think once we have these two figured out it's a great platform for partnering for growth um, so we want to enable a more effective um, partner network a more effective way to communicate that's going to basically then create a faster and a better ecosystem so we have a an exhibition area that people will be able to engage we have one-on-one -on -one meetings um, that we're um, adding this year we have a a uh, round table area that people will actually sit together with eight other great minds and will be able to have conversations around um, around specific items and issues. Um, and we're going to uh, basically bring as many um, technologists and those brands as possible to basically create this uh, um, connect, learn and grow, uh, which is what we're about. And I think that what I'm trying to really create is not innovation outside of the box. I'm trying to create innovation in a box. So having all the 360, everyone in one place um, um, in the summit, and we have a big vision also to maybe bring them in one place actually physically in different centers in the world. Uh, but that's still in, in, um, in uh, planning and uh, some of it execution as well. But I believe bringing the whole ecosystem together is what's needed to create a, a better, better economy and better experiences for the consumers. So that's what we're about and that's what we're solving. I love it. Well, uh, I can tell you, I'm certainly a fan and I definitely made a lot of really great connections at the last chatbot summit in Tel Aviv. Um, some of them have which, you know, been on the podcast, you know, so I, I definitely appreciate, you know. Uh, Michael, you met Michael Furtick? Oh, you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had uh, Michael Furtick on, and then we had Akemi at Tsunagawa from Bespoke on, and then uh, I, uh, I just had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Lauren Kunzi from uh, Pandora Botch yesterday. So, you know, a lot of the great connections, you know, I was able to foster was actually, in fact, you know, from Chatbot Summit. So I do very much appreciate everything you and your team are doing. Um, just pulling all this together, I think it's really great. Thanks. I was wondering how you got to uh, Michael Furtick and... Uh... Kemi-san and I suspected you met them at the summit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was uh, I was sitting with my uh, with my wife in a cafe, uh, and you know, every time someone uh, gets a ticket, I get a push notification, um, not on my bot but on my app still. And then I'm seeing someone from Japan got a ticket, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> like she spoke to no one, she just got a ticket. Uh, <laughs> And I'm like, wow, that's amazing, you know. And uh, I connected her when when she, uh, I was able to uh, meet her in person when she came to the summit. And uh, you know, she's uh, she's doing amazing stuff. Um, really, I mean, one of my slides I had is a vision uh, for the industry. We're going to have yeah, yeah, billboard. Yeah. I know exactly the one you're talking about. You know, and then you know, I had this slide of a subway with a commercial of a bot. And then she's like sending me, I think, a text or <laughs> And I'm seeing actually Japanese bot in the subway and I had to take it and um, our social media manager took it and created a post and I was so, so proud of her. Um, so proud to be part of this ecosystem. It was truly amazing. And, uh, I, and, she, and I hope we'll see her in Berlin. I, I, she told me she's going to come. So uh, yeah, and Michael Furtick has been amazing as well. Uh, it's funny you mentioned these two. I mean, um, yeah, he's, he's doing great stuff as an investor in the field as well. So, yeah. Well, I guess a uh, case in point, you know, to the success of the ecosystem that you're helping foster. So I love it. Um, so maybe speaking, 
you know, we're, we're talking more about like origins here, right? Um, how did you initially get interested or involved in this space? You know, I, I think maybe, you know, if I had to make a, a small assumption, you maybe saw, you know, maybe the natural evolution being part of these other sort of emergent technologies. But I, I'm curious to hear from you, like what sort of spurred this interest for you? You're talking specifically about the, the bots? Um... Right, bots, conversational user interfaces. Yeah. So I can tell you that from day one, me uh, being part of the, uh, you know, Israeli tech or let's say just in tech in general, I always had the passion to deal with, uh, you know, things that improve our interaction with technology. I don't know why, but that's just me. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the past 18 years. And the th three years ago, um, something very interesting happened. Um, first of all, I myself uh, was one of the pioneers of the app um, paradigm shift. And I actually had a slide in 2008 saying we're going to have hundreds of thousands of apps. And I said that they in the life of our consumer. And then I had these imaginary apps. Um, and I was wrong, by the way, because we have millions and not hundreds. <laughs> Uh, but I felt so strong that this is going to be the next big thing. And to be honest, I think three years ago, I, you know, I, I spoke to some, you know, younger people and they're like, oh, I need to download an app. I don't have time for it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's two minutes to download an app. And I, when I remember when I downloaded my first app, I was so excited. I don't have to buy a new phone or upgrade the operating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The new app, it was amazing. And th this 20 year old is like, I don't want to download a new app, take pictures. I'm like, what are you talking about? Do you want to go buy a new phone? So, but it's like asking someone to go and make a phone call from a pay phone, right? It's also two minutes, right? Both are two minutes. So this is ridiculous going to a pay phone, making a phone call. It's also ridiculous today to download an app, but it's, it's more than that. So it's also, you know, when technology gets to a certain level, we as consumers, our expectations are always growing. So now, yeah, I have an app. That's great. What is the next thing? So, mm. and you notice that also apps are very, very expensive, not only to just develop, but also to create um, engagement and re-engagement. So one of the things I um, have been an expert in is uh, what I call, you know, the art of app engagement. And I advise many, uh, companies and leading brands how to create more engaging apps and, and you know and and I, I i told them uh, what are the things that need to get done in order to create an engaging app and it was so much work whereas whatsapp and you saw all the engaging apps all the top engaging apps were either social media social networks sorry or even more messaging apps so and, and then I did what I always do. I uh, looked east uh, mm -hmm. and noticed what's happening with WeChat. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, in mobile and in technology, you know, they always, because maybe the sun rises there first. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, they, they, they are usually more advanced. Um, and I saw that what's happening in WeChat and, and, and then when Facebook came up with the uh, open up the platform and approached us at Life Person, then I, I sort of, you know, I called before Facebook, I started calling this trend conversational apps. Um, but then Facebook came and then we changed it to bots and chatbots. And then at that mo moment, I decided that I want to uh, venture out, uh, out of Life Person um has nothing to do with life person it's more about myself i've been an entrepreneur but most of my uh, ventures i've done at big corporations and i was able to create uh, meaningful businesses but always inside of a bigger corporations and i decided i want to venture out this time on my own um, and i didn't know what i was going to do uh, that's the truth it's a bit scary to be honest uh, <laughs> And I said, you know, until I'll know what to do, let's go to a few meetups and, and learn about this new conversational bots and stuff. I found nothing. Yeah, so yeah. I'll create a meetup because I had a meetup on app engagement. And I, I'll create a meetup. So I created a meetup. Um, 
I did my little uh, bit of growth hacking and marketing, but not too much. We had 250 people attend. Wow. It's incredible. I was like, what? Uh, yeah, okay, guys, bring more pizza. Bring more. Well, we don't have the budgets. Okay, I'll pay for the pizzas. Just, you know, let's bring more pizzas in. And um, yeah, and then I said, okay, I, okay, and I still don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, why, why don't not create a conference? Um, yeah, let's bring a thousand people. Let's take the most expensive, biggest venue in Israel. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, conference. And I didn't know that's going to be so much work. I didn't know it's going to be so much fun and such a challenge, but uh, that's what I did. Um, and I had a great team uh, with me, uh, great partners that uh, helped me create this amazing thing. And the most important thing is I had a community that's so eager to learn and connect and grow. Um, we created a conference of 1,000 people in the top place in Tel Aviv in less than two months. That's, that's incredible. Incredible. And it's, it's just thanks to the people that are so enthusiastic uh, about making, making this happen, including, by the way, the big companies, um, companies that you, you, you think would take them three months to make a decision, turn back and 24 hours said we're in. 24 that's awesome. hours from a company that's worth $200 billion. I don't want to mention specific names. <laughs> 24 hours to say we're in. Um, and and yeah, so, and then I said, okay, I still don't know what I'm going to do. So until I know, why not do something more international? Why not do it in Berlin? Um, and I had a great support from an executive at Live person uh, who was local in Berlin. He said, yeah, let's do it here. You have more brands, uh, you know, more exposure to, to the to inter international community from, from, you know, a different community that's going to attend there. Um, and we went with Berlin and, you know, so that's how I uh, introduced myself into this. But I, I did strongly believe from, from the, the, the first time that Facebook actually opened the platform, like the, the aha moment for me was that, but it wasn't from a hype perspective. Like I knew there was going to be a lot of hype and I actually used some of that hype, but I think that a lot of the things that Facebook are doing is amazing. I think that the, more focused in the natural language, which is what this is about. It's not about the messaging. I mean, messaging is a channel that enables this better communication, but the better communication from the consumer perspective is to use natural language, either text or voice. And I think that um, Facebook needs to put a stronger emphasis on that, on the natural language aspect. I mean, they have been putting, but I, I think they need to invest more in that. Uh, if I compare them, you know, to other companies that I'm seeing uh, leading in this field. Um, so for me, it was all about that. And, um, and the reason I, I, I feel so strong about it is, and I think I mentioned this at the beginning, is because this is what's going to make it easier for us to communicate. And it's not about, you, you, you can say, maybe people don't like to hear, but we are lazy. But I don't think lazy in the bad sense, because if we preserve our energy to do more meaningful stuff than to wait two minutes to download an app or to go for a pay phone or everything counts today. And the more effective we are as people interacting with technology or interacting through technology, we're going to grow faster as, you know, as a human race. And I, and I think um, that's what we are about. You know, we are about, we need to grow. There is no other way. Us as humans, we have to grow. So I think technology helps us grow faster and better. Um, and by the way, I don't think we'll talk about it in this podcast, but there are people that use technology not, not for the best. I mean, some people abuse technology and actually use it too much, not for the intention or not for the way, ways it was designed. Um, so I get a lot of these questions, so I'm just going to put it out there. Um, that I think technology does create adva advancements for us. And some of us don't, or maybe a lot of us don't use it in the right way, but that's, that's our job. That's not the job of the technology itself. Definitely. No, absolutely. I think, you know, there's always sort of like a balancing effect, right? It's like, you know, in, in, every, in everything, right? Whether it's like overconsumption of technology or using it in the right areas. Um, but I absolutely agree with you. 
And, you know, sort of speaking about your initial origin of being interested and wanting to get involved and sort of the natural evolution of saying, hey, well, there's no community. Let me try and foster community and seeing that initial traction of, okay, 200 people are showing up. I think there's some interest here and then running the first event. So, you know, all of that said, are you sort of looking for a project right now? Are you looking to start a specific project or, or jump onto a team of a, that's running something already? Or, or are you still sort of looking right now? I have my own, I mean, uh, first of all, I, uh, I get a lot of, uh, you know, requests for my opinion on a lot of things. Um, opinions is uh, fairly easy to share. You know, I always, always say, you know, you don't really need me, but that's my opinion. And, and uh, it's the easiest thing to do. And I actually enjoy giving opinions. So I advise some startups and mentor some of them. And also, I also um, work with some corporates on their overall like three to five year digital transformation strategy. I also get invited to speak at events, uh, private events, corporate events. So I, I do some of that. But my bigger vision is to um, create this innovation in the box that I mentioned. Um, so I would like to, um, and I've already started building what I call the nerve center mm. of the human technology interaction or the next wave of human technology interaction. So what I'm trying to build is a full stack of from, you know, a venture fund that's going to invest in startups in this field to a market accelerator that's going to help accelerate the startups to media company um, that we started already with the conferences and uh, we're doing partnerships with online publications. Um, incubator that's going to incubate a lot of the, the technologies, um, academy. So think of, of, of this whole thing. And, and, and by the way, it doesn't mean that we are going to create from scratch or with our you know, not invented here mentality. On, on the contrary, I'm talking to a lot of partners in the ecosystem, um, but I, I want to, to bring this whole thing in, whole thing in a box um, where you have from the academy to the, to the venture incubation, to the market acceleration, to the marketing, uh, you know, the way I see Chatbot Summit is, you know, we help you connect, but also grow uh, with basically helping you market uh, your product better to the community and partner, um, to a fund. Um, so all of that together, and, and it might be too much to, uh, to grasp or too much to chew on. Uh, sometimes, you know, I wake up and I'm like, what ne like <laughs> I, you know, what's next? And I'm, I, am, I am always taking it, you know, um, step by step. Um, and we, I have a strong team. I was so lucky to bring in such a strong team. Um, and, and we're advancing um, faster and at a faster pace. Um, and this whole ecosystem in a box, innovation in a box around uh, human technology interaction, leading with natural language. That's sort of my life project. That's what I'm, that's what I'm working on. Uh, that's what I'm dreaming on. That's what I'm thinking of. That's what I love. Um, and that's what I do. Um, and and if, if, if someone needs my help in, if you were suggesting whether it's what I'd like to partner or help other people's projects. So the answer is definitely yes. Um, of course, it's going to be in a, in a limited uh, capacity just in terms of, of time um, and resources, but I'm always happy to, uh, to engage with the community, to engage with startups, to engage with brands, technology leaders, um, you know, whoever needs help, I'm always happy to, uh, do it. Cool. I love it. I love the vision. Um, you know, I, I think you're, you're so right. You know, this, we're sort of at the brink of such a significant paradigm shift and we've only sort of scratched the surface at this point. So I love yeah. what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so maybe getting into more of the, you know, I guess, granular specific specifics of chatbot and voice. Um, can you maybe talk about some of the initial successes that you saw early on that sort of con to continue to sort of encourage you to stay in this space? Um, it could be specific, you know, implementations that you've consulted on or ones that you've, you've seen or people that you've talked to. I think people that I talk to the most, you know, I, I found, I met a lot of people. Some of them I sort of noticed they're just trying to ride the hype. Um, and mm. by the way, it's fine. There's no, nothing wrong, wrong about it. But um, the people that I met that um, I had a very deep conversations about, you know, just like I'm having with you now, you know, you're asking questions that are meaningful that have, you know, you've obviously you're expert in the field yourself and you've, you've been living this yourself. Um, so the people that I met, um, 
I think, first and foremost. Um, and then, you know, the companies that I've been talking to and understanding their strategy and understanding the, the level of investment that they're doing. So, you know, the, the I call them the McGough companies, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Apple, and Facebook. Um, their investment in the field is always um, encouraging to see. And other companies, you know, IBM and LifePerson, and I can go on with, I don't want to start naming too many names because why didn't you mention my name? <laughs> uh, Oracle, Microsoft, I mentioned already. So I'm, I think that um, um, and a lot of startups, great minds um, that are really, really making this uh, this thing happen. I think also the, um, I, I saw a lot of companies actually repositioning themselves to be a chatbot company. So that's okay. also one of the initial things I saw as a trend. And I think the acquisition of uh, NanoRep by LogMeIn, which is another company that's making yeah. huge investments in this field. And uh, it's a company I've never heard of before. And, you know, once you look and you see what this company is doing, it's truly amazing. And the fact that they acquired Log Me, uh, acquired NanoRep, which before that NanoRep was a knowledge, knowledge base, um, as, you know, intelligent FAQ. Hmm. And I think they, um, that they repurposed themselves um, fairly. Um, and it might be that they haven't repurposed. It might have been that, that it was always there from the, from the get-go. But I think that the, that the fact that they noticed the, the market of, of, of the conversational chatbot and they, they, and they embraced it, they didn't try, so they embraced the change uh, and they took their, their amazing technology and product and, and, and basically played um, um, right with the industry, I think that that's, that was also uh, a great story that uh, sort of um, helped me uh, understand that this, you know, this is going, but, but you know, it's, it's not about this specific thing or the other, it's just, um, it's just, I know that the technology is good enough. I, I'm building stuff myself just for me to play with. Uh, I know the technology is good enough. I know that the consumers want it. And I know that the brands need it. So for me, it's, it's a no-brainer. That's what's happening. That's what's going to happen. So it's less about specifics, but uh, yeah. Definitely. No, absolutely. I think those are all great points. You know, the people and, you know, the large companies and, you know, companies repositioning themselves to be conversational based companies. Um, I think all those things make sense. Um, yeah, so one well, thing, five person as an example, you know, yeah, you yeah, take, yeah. You no, know, they're not going to do bots. No, it's contradicting, it's contradicting live person. But I mean, if, if you see live person strategy, yeah. obviously they want to improve, uh, I, you know, their mantra is create meaningful connections between um, uh, consumers and brands, which is a beautiful mission. And I think that um, they understood very quickly that bots are here to make this interaction better, smarter, more effective for everyone. And they're, they're, they have bots as part of their main uh, strategy today. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I mean, I think you're actually maybe sort of a forerunner in, uh, in setting the stage for actually, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, setting the stage for like T-Mobile and their customer support. If I, I was reading something online and the interesting thing is um, I actually know several people that have helped them build on top of the live person platform um, where they now have a chat bot at the T-Mobile in the U.S. at this point. So it's very interesting. It's a very small community at this point. Uh, all these yeah, I'll tell you a T-Mobile story, uh, not here, but it's, uh, it's an amazing one. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, you know, I think the other component about any emergent technology is not only understanding the vision um, of where it's going and this idealized world that we know, you know, maybe five, 10, 15 years down the line, I think you and I can both see the potential. But I think also it's very important to understand what are the current limitations so we can sort of operate, you know, within the current bounds of the ecosystem so we can still drive a lot of business outcomes. And also so we understand, you know, what are the current obstacles that people should be putting a lot of time in. So in your perspective, you know, what are the main obstacles you see right now that people should be investing most of their time so we can get to this next level? So when, when you're talking about obstacles, uh, could you be more specific? Sure, absolutely. Um, so obstacles such as, you know, creating some user experience standards or best practices, or similarly, you know, making 
some of the NOU engines more robust and more scalable, um, like sort of things at that like lower level where people are actually building bots and some of the limitations that I guess exist in the ecosystem right now? Okay, so I would, I would, I would um, split it into two, if mm. I may. Uh, first of all is uh, what do we have today um, as products? Uh, and some would call them technologies to create products. Um, you know, it depends on the user. Someone would say this is a product. Someone would say, no, this is a technology for me to use to launch a product. So uh, when I say a product, I usually mean a consumer product or someone that actually. Um, so I think that the ones that are launching products um, into this and, you know, most of them are, uh, you know, the, the brands, consumer brands. I think that they need to, first of all, understand uh, what technologies are available for them today. And then they need to uh, live with it and create the best experience they can using what exists today and um, uh, creating, first of all, uh, a coherent um, uh, strategy. Uh, first of all, setting a, a realistic goals. Um, that's, I think, many companies fail just from that. They select the wrong goal. They select the wrong use case. They go too broad. They're too naive. And... I think if you ask me what's the number one problem, that's setting the wrong goal hmm. and selecting the wrong consumer group that they're going to address. Second is having a plan um, that is going to create uh, not a good, but a great experience because we as consumers, we don't want good. We want great because we want something that's better than, than, than what we have today. So if you're going to create a good chatbot versus a great app, guess what's going to happen, right? So it's about creating a great natural language experience. Um, and creating a great natural language, language experience takes time uh, and takes the knowledge to select the right technologies. And it might be that this technology that the other company used is actually not right for them. You know, it's not, there's, it's not a one, one size fits all. And then um, putting and, and having the human in the loop still, I think is very important. Um, um, so emphasis on human in the loop technologies that are going to basically enable and assure uh, that the experience is there. Um, and then also setting up a machine learning framework that's going to be intelligent and it's going to learn from the interactions to improve on the go. So that's one uh, thing um, that I recommend, and that's in the first bucket I mentioned, which is what do we have today now? Mm. Let's, let's work with what we have and create these experiences incrementally. Um, and that's sort of my, uh, my view on that. Um, and the challenges there, as I said, are expectations and just working with what, what there is. Um, Second is a longer term view. And, and by the way, the advice, that's what the advice for the brands, my advice for the, for the, for the technology vendors and a lot of them, uh, first of all, for the big ones, don't go with too big of a project because you're going to set, if someone's paying you a million dollars for a project, they want a million dollar result, right? So if, if you're not planning on giving a million dollar result, just go with a, a, lower, a lower budget and expand from there. Um, on the other hand, I see a lot of startups saying, okay, I just want to build a track record or I don't have really a product yet, I have technology, so I'll do a PLC. Okay, how much is the PLC? Charge 10, 20, 30, $40,000. Don't say it's for free. I mean, <laughs> everyone's creating a free PLC. So you have these extremes in the market. And then, so my advice, I mean, it's easy for me and I always say it's easy to give advice. So I'm not saying it's not easy, it's easy, but I still believe in it. Don't do zero dollar POCs. You know, the, the same amount of effort that the, the executive or your champion is going to put into funding the project internally of putting resource in, into it, he might as well go and, and, and get a check for ten twenty thousand dollars And if he can't, then, you know, he might not be the good fit for you. So that's, that, that's my view. And I think a lot of startups, you know, I recommend to stop with these um, with the zero dollar POCs and then also decide whether you are a service company agency, which is a great business to be in. It is uh, 
not the best margin business, but if you love what you do and you love serving customers, then do, by all means, build the best agency and stop saying you're building a platform and wasting money on building a platform that's mediocre that no one's going to use it at the end and you're going to drop it in a year or two. And, and instead of creating the best agency, you've created a mediocre agency with a mediocre, mediocre product. Um, so just decide what you're doing and do it best. Um, and then for those that have a technology, work with these agencies and have a go-to-market and have documentation around it, have training around it, build more than just a technology, uh, but have a great technology. So that's sort of the, the, the first part. The second part is the longer term view of the market. And over there, I'm also going to split it into two, you know, the brands launching these products to the market. I don't know if I'm taking too much time. Is it okay? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you if, if, if you have a little time because I think we might run over a little bit. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I like talking. That's yeah, no, absolutely. I love it. My knowledge, but, uh, I love uh, it my, back soon, but I, I think we should end soon, but I just wanted to finish sure. that thread. So if you look at the longer term view, so again, I'm splitting it into companies that launch the products and those that build the technology. So those that launch the products, uh, I think that they need to sit down and relax and think how the market would look like in three to five years, seven years from today. And if they really think how the market is going to look like, it's going to be very different, very different. And if they don't do the paradigm shift today, they're just going to be left behind. They're going to have, um, if they have a competitive advantage, they might lose it. If they don't have, uh, competitive advantage, they might, might stay even uh, further behind. Um, but they need to think about a world where most of the interaction of people are, is going to be through natural language. So, and when I'm saying most, or a, let's say a significant part, okay? I mean, we always want to give people the, the freedom to choose whichever way they want to communicate with technology. Our job is to give them the option. Uh, but I have a sense that people would prefer, a lot of people would prefer to speak um, or write using natural language. Um, I know a few, I know I am myself, I'm like, I'm like that. Um, so yeah, I think this, this piece is very important to, uh, to do, um, is to envision and vision the, mar vision the market and then vision yourself in the market um, and then build a plan and then, and, and then if that's the, how the market is going to look like, what does it mean for me as a brand, right? And then how will my services look like? How will my uh, goods and services look like in three to five years from today? And then build the plan, um, create a strategy. Um, you have a digital transformation strategy, but, you know, try and, uh, and, 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 and uh, adapt it, try to... Um, take that digital transformation strategy and see how it fits to a vision of, of, of a significant amount of interaction uh, using natural language. Um, and, and by the way, it's not a linear move. Um, if you think about what, for example, Uber did, right? They didn't take a taxi, uh, you know, ecosystem and say, okay, we're going to, a taxi from a mobile phone is going to be a taxi where I can order a taxi driver from my phone. No, it's a whole new paradigm shift, right? Uh, so this, the same thing with conversational and natural language. I think that what's happening with uh, Alexa and all the uh, Google Home and Cortana and Siri, I think um, a lot of these interactions are going to turn into relationships and are going to turn um, these, uh, these experiences into what I call the concierge model. So I think that companies need to think of in a concierge uh, mindset, how they can be a trusted advisor for the consumer. Uh, so that's, that's one extreme. A second extreme is how do I uh, reduce my operational costs while providing a better experience in the whole customer service world and e-commerce and post sales post, uh, sales service and all these for uh, uh, cost reduction. So, um, and they really need to create this plan and then say, okay, what do I need in order to get there? And part of it is also, acquiring technologies today, getting the know-how, learning about uh, what's happening with the different technologies, what's happening with the market, um, and also um, hiring the right people. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of brands that I met in my journey, I found 
great people um, that had positions uh, that I, I think took that position just because they worked at, the, at that specific brand for 10 years and now they wanted to advance. Um, I think it's okay, but I think it's not good enough. I think that if, if that's what the, the, the big corporates want to do, it's okay, but they need to invest much more in training and learning of these versus saying, okay, you were uh, uh, responsible for the web interaction. Now, okay, you told us you want an app interaction, so you've been very good, so now you're responsible for apps. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Great, thank you for the promotion and what am I going to do? Um, and it wasn't really so. You either hire people from the outside as experts that are going to be part of the team or you're going to um, um, educate and train um, your, um, your, your labor force um, uh, now. Because I'll tell you what's, what's, hap what's funny. Once WhatsApp opens the platform and then you'll have the top bank or the top telco in the world, everyone's using their uh, WhatsApp bot, right? So the, the, other, the other banks are going to just, okay, now we also need to create something. And that, okay. So you are now responsible for the bot and, and, and then they don't really know what they're doing. It's going to take them a lot of time. They're going to waste a lot of money um, and they're not going to do it right. So I suggest even if you're not sure, uh, like you don't have to be as convinced as we are, uh, but if there is a chance that let's say it's a 20% chance, right, that it's going to happen. So, you know, invest a adequate amount of resources, at least for learning, training, uh, getting to know the industry and getting to know the technologies um, so and, and create a vision and a strategy for that, at least that. That's what I recommend. Um, and then for the technology um, companies uh, and the startups, I mean, I think that um, I'm still seeing too many uh, startups doing uh, more of the same. Um, and... You know, I've been, I've been saying it, I think, in the past uh, two Chatbot Summit keynotes, um, and I'm, st I'm still seeing it. Um, and, um, I mean, there's so much stuff. I mean, people think, uh, have a par this thing in their head that in order to be a bot company, you have to have an end-to-end -end platform. And, guys, you know, there are many good end-to-end -end platforms today. Why do you... Why do you need to create another end-to-end -end platform? Why can't you just say, okay, I came in two years after, uh, for whichever reason, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is how the market looks like. And these are, these are the opportunities. So think about three years ahead, if you're building now a technology startup and you decided you're not an agency, look three years ahead. Think how these experiences would look like. I mean, a company that does only personality, like takes a bot and creates a personality for that bot is, is a great company. It's a great technology. Companies that would do natural language generation, I haven't seen too many that take text and data and turn it into a conversation. Forget about the understanding and the intent extraction. Everyone's doing it already. I mean, and they're going to do it better. And yes, it could be that I'm sitting here and saying, and the next best platform is being built now. <laughs> okay. So out of the hundred companies that are trying to build that next, why not try and focus on, on places that there is no market leader today, that there is no really need. There's no need for another end-to-end -end platform that has everything in it. There's just no need in the market for that. There is a need for bits and pieces that could be huge and great, so building these technologies, personality, natural language generation, dialogue management, look at what the uh, duplex uh, demo uh, with Google, I think it was a great demo. Uh, mm -hmm, and, you know, but I think it was too much. And I think that the, the fact that uh, Google didn't mention that she's a bot, I think it, it hurt us as an industry. And I think that Google uh, fixed it in some way. But I, I think that trying to create this... Uh, notion that we don't know if you're talking to a bot or a human is just not the way we should go about it because people will feel deceived and we don't want people 
to feel deceived about bots because they're not going to adopt them. So I think the first and fo most important thing is to say, yes, I'm a technology and you're talking to a technology. It's perfectly fine. Um, and I think they fixed it after that. But I think that dialogue management, the true dialogue management, not just in a specific use case, again, talking about technology three to five years ahead, it's a great opportunity, I think. Um, the world of predictive analytics um, is great for websites and apps. I think that for um, predicting behavior based on conversational and relationship, I think the amount of data that we have today, um, you know, based on a health bot, I think health is going to be huge, by the way. So, you know, it's stuff that if, if, if you look at an app or a website, the amount of data they gather in a bot, that's going to be a bot for diabetes patients, for example, that's going to track their daily behavior. It's going to be their concierge for anything and everything that they need to, uh, you know, fight the disease in the best way possible um, is only the technologies that I can think about for personality, habit creation, predictive analytics natural language generation for these types of concierge uh, bots is a huge opportunity. Um, and we didn't even talk about voice motion detection um, and voice. And I'm actually seeing companies um, in this field, very happy to see, um, you know, uh, platforms. Uh, by the way, voice to text, text to voice isn't solved. <laughs> Sounds simple, isn't solved um, technology wise. Um, and then you could also go further ahead to general AI. Uh, so I wouldn't go into true general AI, but maybe um, something um, hybrid uh, between, you know, the manual uh, coding of the conversation and the general AI that's just going to be able to converse with you on any topic anywhere. I think that there, there might be opportunity somewhere in between. Um, um, yeah, human in the loop, uh, when to uh, call in a human uh, versus a false alarm. How do you uh, create a framework that's uh, always learning um, and takes what the human intervention happened? Was it the right intervention? Was it a wrong intervention? Um, was it at the right time? Was it with the right human? Yeah. Right? So all this is huge. Um, E-commerce. I mean, I can go on for ages. I think, I think that's pretty much. Uh, no, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, I know. I think you and I could probably keep talking for like four hours, but um, you know, in, in the uh, in sense of some time. Eighty percent of the of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. No, um, I'm definitely. I, I mean, personally, I'm going to be rewinding and watching that later on. You know, I know our viewers are going to love you know hearing your perspective because I think there's so many facets, and I think you're right. Um, in regards to where these new companies and these new resources and these new, you know, just titles for different positions will begin to emerge over the next several years here. And, uh, you know, hopefully we are building the components of general AI, you know, we hopefully we are building the building blocks. So one day we can get to that um, next paradigm. Um, but um, that being said, you know, I just want to sort of open the floor for you and uh, let people know about Chatbot Summit that's upcoming in Berlin or where they can see you speak or what you guys have cooking right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, uh, the next Chatbot Summit is going to be in Berlin, uh, October 23rd, 24th. Um, it's going to be the best conference we've had ever. Um, awesome favorites, but we've been working on it for a while. We have a great team of uh, people that are driving this thing and also people that help. Um, and we're going to have a day of learning um, on the 23rd, uh, hands-on workshops, roll up your sleeves, coding, um, both in terms of you know technologies for machine learning and text and also voice is a huge, huge uh, theme that we're going to cover. And we're also going to have strategy workshops uh, for brands, um, customer service executives, uh, head of digitals, aligning their digital transformation strategy, help create the framework for the vision, RFP frameworks on how to select the technology. So all the things I talked about, you could expect here on the first day. Um, we're going to have a speaker breakfast during that day. So all the speakers are going to, uh, connect in the morning and uh, you know the morning before not the morning of 
so they could also, you know, have their own uh, time together and uh, compare some notes. And uh, a lot of the things I don't like happening is a speaker coming up and then saying, sort of repeats the first five minutes uh, exactly what is uh, speaker said. So that doesn't happen a lot at Chatbot Summit because I try to review all the presentations, but I think if the, if the speakers connect before, it's going to be better for everyone. Um, and then in the evening, we're going to have a pre-networking event. It's not going to be a free uh, beers and open bar because we want people to wake up early. Uh, so, you know, just think about a, you know, relaxed pre-networking event. Um, some chill out music, uh, some beers, uh, connecting, you know, you know, getting excited uh, before the big day. Um, and then uh, the day of is going to start, you know, with uh, networking, coffee and registration. Uh, we're going to have a exciting um, keynote, I hope. Uh, I always create the, the slides um, a day or two before because I feel that that's when I get the, the best um, and latest uh, sort of, uh, it's not that I don't prepare the information before, but I really like to uh, actually create the actual slides a uh, day or two before. So um, we're going to have though interesting data in that keynote uh, and we're going to have, I can't uh, name the speakers yet, but we have so many speakers that have been uh, requesting uh, or applying to speak and uh, we're going to announce some of them soon. So you could expect, you know, great keynotes, great panels. Uh, we're going to have a bot on stage. Cool. A Very bot cool. On, yeah, a bot on stage. That's it, I said it, now it has to happen. Um, and we're going to uh, have um, a roundtable discussions with you know eight people in the table. That's going they're going to be able to uh, connect um, at a at a different level. Uh, we're going to have a startup competition. Uh, the three top uh, startups are going to actually present at the center stage. Oh wow! In front of the whole audience. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. So that's only the top three. The day before, we're going to have, uh, you know, the, the, um, the pre-finalists uh, um, present. And we're going to have also breakout rooms for uh, product specialists. We're going to uh, have breakout rooms for uh, machine learning developers. And we're going to cover subjects such as, you know, voice. We're going to talk about human technology interaction. So not just about natural language, we're going to go, you know, what I call uh, bots and beyond. So I'm not going to say what it's going to be about exactly, uh, but we have some ideas and some very, very interesting speakers. Um, we're going to talk about the personal assistance. We're going to cover industries like health, finance, automotive. Um, um, yeah, we're going to have a great trade show. Uh, with exhibitors and startup booths and great uh, companies that people are going to be able to uh, play with some of the bots. And then in the evening, we're going to have, um, you know, open bar after party. Um, we might party until the sun rise. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the, the plan. Uh, really excited about having uh, you there uh meeting you in person over there again and then also um you know people um we're getting a lot of uh great uh feedback from the community people are um purchasing tickets and sponsors and partners are on board and media partners and it's uh it's all still in the um a lot a lot of it is in behind the scenes we're going to start announcing some of that pretty soon um yeah so Pretty excited about what's going to happen. Cool. No, I, I I certainly am looking forward to it. So I love to you know sort of get you know a little behind the scenes from you before everything else uh, gets announced early. So I think that's really cool. Um, before I let you go, I always like to ask all of our guest speakers this, and I know you alluded to it a little bit, but um, you know especially in an emerging technology, um, what sort of keeps you motivated and inspired to keep going, to keep exploring, to you know get out of bed in the morning and, and be excited about what you're doing. I just love, I love what I do. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I just love being part of the creation of better interactions between human and technology. I, I, I can't, I don't know what is the reason. 
Um, um, I, I know that it creates a better ecosystem for everyone. I know that it drives better growth for, for, the, for the human, for the, you know, it sounds too big for humanity, but um, I just think that technology is awesome and creating better interaction with technology is just going to make us grow better and faster as, you know, that's what I am about. That's what our team is about. And that's what gets us excited. And uh, there's not much more to it. That's the truth. Love it. I love it. Well, I definitely resonate with that, but uh, Yov, it's been a pleasure. I want to thank you so much for coming on to the podcast today and sharing all of your insights and thoughts. Um, definitely look forward to Chatbot Summit and we'll definitely have you back on the podcast again. Sure. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for cool. your great contribution to the community. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye.